You can watch Walt Wednesday live on Twitch every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Visit www.elevatestreams.com for more info. When you wish upon a star, it makes no difference who you are. <laughs> I'm over it. All right. Let's just move on. <laughs> Everything's broken. I love it. Okay. Anyway, hello. Welcome to another episode of Walt Wednesday. Uh, your favorite Disney talk show. I'm your hostess, Jazz Ojo. I am accompanied by my bestest friend and the world's greatest co-host, uh, Bermibe. Um, on this show, we will be giving you news you didn't know you needed. But trust us, you need it. Ever wondered what happened today in Disney history? Never really thought about it, but now that you mention it, I am curious. Don't worry, we got you covered. Each week we'll be covering a different Walt Disney movie. For instance, where the origin of the movie came from, and how Disney changed it to make it their own. We'll also be asking you some questions. Do you like trivia? I know I do. Where do you live? Do you live any near any Disney parks? Or near any major cities? If so, we will be telling you about different events going on around the world. What is your opinion about the new or upcoming Disney movies? Are there any? I don't know, but we will see later. Welcome to, Welcome Walt, to Wednesday. Walt Wednesday. Hi, guys. How are you all doing? Are you fantastic? Because I was, <laughs> you know, I was just had Twitch open to see chat, right? And then it started playing because I thought everything was muted. Lies. I'm busy. Go away. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's go ahead and dive into Disney news. I'm sorry. Uh, Disney has recently announced that a new Planet of the Apes is in production. It currently is unclear, though, if it's going to be a new trilogy or if they're going to be continuing off of the last one. We have also... They also announced that uh, Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser is to debut in 2021. They didn't give an exact time frame, unfortunately, but they did say that it will be the year 2021. Uh, there will also be many new things that are going to be added to the Epcot, including but not limited to a new Ratatouille ride, which I believe they also have a Ratatouille ride in France but they did not have one in the U.S. yet. I mean, that makes sense that it's in France because that's where Ratatouille is based. Yeah. Uh, it's just kind of surprising to me that they didn't already have that, at least in the works before now, considering Ratatouille's been out how many years now? Like 12, I believe. I think it came out in 2007. It's 2007. I, I I literally threw a blank. I don't know when ghost movies come out. I only know the ones I care about. <laughs> you know, I care about all Disney movies. I care about that one, not as much. <laughs> I don't like rats, okay? They're gross. They shouldn't be on food. Well, he's not on the food. He just helps to prepare it That's through funny. controlling a human. Even though rats are really clean creatures, but you know what, this isn't about Ratatouille. <laughs> not this time, anyways. Yeah, not this season. You know, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but let's uh, move on um, to On This Day in Disney History. Um, each week we... Um, whatever date it is, so like today being December 4th, we will tell you what happened some time ago, way back when. Whenever. Maybe your grandpa was a, like, four. You never know. <laughs> um, but in 1959, the TV series Wall Disney Presents airs Texas John Le um, ooh, Texas John Slaughter. Slaughter, Definitely. yeah. I didn't want to say that, because this is PG-13, you know. <laughs> Slaughter. Oh, I don't know. Words. It's fine. Um, oh, Robert Stallion. No, it's spelled, uh, 
it was filmed in Texas and it was this um the, it's seventh in a series of 17 episodes pretty neat Frito Dorito you know fine um it's based on John Hardin um an actual historical figure who helped clear Texas territory of outlaw in is pretty pretty neat you know what's that? like when did they when was texas a territory i don't remember i wasn't good in history because i slept in flat glass that's u.s history we're here talking about disney history yeah. <laughs> we can i mean which of the two is too. honestly more important Disney history is always more important than U.S. history. Sorry, Declaration of Independence, but Disney's better. <laughs> um. Well, on this week's episode, we are doing um, the lovely, lovely Pinocchio. Uh, Pinocchio is a marionette that was pre that was um created. Um, by um, a lovely, lovely wood carver. Why am I blanking on his name? Geppetto, that's his name. I'm, I'm, I'm not. You know, it's fine. <laughs> but um, Pinocchio was uh, actually based on a not a really a true story. Um, oh Lord, I can't talk today boys and girls my <laughs> brain is broken today i've been having struggles literally all day <laughs> it's fine though anyway let me just start over <laughs> all right end stream we're done we're starting over i'm kidding but um uh, the adventures of pinocchio is a children's novel it was made in 1883 by an italian writer named Carlo, Carlo, Carlo D. I don't know. I'm not clear on how to say his last name, but you know it's fine. Um, this novel was uh, supposed to be a warning to children to pretty much tell them that you can't take the easy way out and that you need to have some hardship in order to build up your full potential. For being a children's book, we're going to get into this, and it's pretty gruesome. So, be prepared for that. Any words, Brett? Would you like to say any words? Uh, From my but no words. <laughs> uh, I well, it. hopefully it can teach a valuable lesson uh, yeah. without being too terrifying. Oh, oh, oh. I'll be as nice as possible for your little, little ears, okay? <laughs> the baby ears. But, okay. The, this is how the book goes. Um, the story stops off with a woodcraftsman named Antonio. He has this block of pine wood, and he wants to turn it into a lake for his, for his table. Um, as soon as he starts carving it, the wood screams. Okay, like, imagine... You hit a wood with an axe, and it starts to scream. Just like, stop hitting me! <laughs> like, whoa. I think I would just walk away and never look back. And probably check myself into a, like, mental hospital or something. I think that's fine. Um, but Antonio freaked, was freaked out by the magic wood, and he just gives it to his poor neighbor, uh, <laughs> Geppetto that wanted to start a career as a puppeteer. So Geppetto decides to make his first puppet, which was Pinocchio. Um, Pinocchio was very, very rude whenever it had a few choice words while he was making, while he was be his creator was making him. But I'm not going to say those lovely choice words. On that will be not a smart idea. <laughs> Uh, but as soon as Pinocchio's nose was carved, it starts growing longer the more he acts mean towards Geppetto. 
Uh, once Pinocchio's legs and feet were carved, he kicks the poor man in just rude, like, you're being created, yet you're being so rude. I don't think I could do that. I don't know about you, but I can't. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be that mean. Uh, then once Pinocchio got, uh, learns how to walk, he goes into town. And whenever he gets into town, he uh, uh, gets stopped by a police officer. And he um, asks, pretty much asks him why he's running. And then a little bit of this and that. And Geppetto's in jail. Because the police officer assumes that Geppetto, Pinocchio's father, has been abusing him because he was running away from him. Why else would you run away from your father if he is, unless he's hurting you? So that's what the officer thought, and took poor old Geppetto to jail. Big sad, big sad. <laughs> um, what's your thoughts on this, Burnby? Or Mibes? Well, I mean, doesn't everybody probably end up kicking their parents at some point? Maybe not intentionally, but like when they're sitting there trying to get the diaper on you, I think you'll end up kicking them. So I can't imagine kicking my parents, just not intentionally. Uh, I, I see that. But I don't know. I mean, you'd think that when Geppetto realizes that this block of wood he's carving is moving and doing other things, he might want to try... I don't know, stopping? I mean, that would be my thoughts. I'd be like, oh, this wood is cursed. I'm going to just leave it alone, maybe burn it. <laughs> yeah. That's what Not I'm... continue carving it into a puppet that could then have hands and, you know, feet and run and slap and kick and possibly strangle. Right, right. Um... But whatever. <laughs> uh... <laughs> okay. I was seeing if you were done or not, but um, <laughs> the worst part about the whole situation with Geppetto going to jail is that Pinocchio didn't even care. He just was like, eh, you'll be all right. No big deal. Whatever. And he just goes back to his house where he meets a regular talking cricket. Okay. Talking things. All right. Wood, there's wood and crickets and everything else in this ever. Uh, this is a child's book. You can tell this is a children's book. <laughs> talking wood, talking bugs. What are they going to introduce next? A talking spoon, a talking teapot? Hey, this isn't Beauty and the Beast here. This is Pinocchio. <laughs> Glad you got what I was going for, though. <laughs> of course I do. But... Um, the cricket starts to tell Pinocchio that he has lived in this house for a century and warns Pinocchio if he continues uh, to misbehave that he's going to suffer, to, to suffer, I'm hungry, <laughs> to suffer repercussions. <laughs> um, uh, Pinocchio uh, did, didn't feel like listening. Um, and the whole long nagging speech from the cricket was giving him, he decided to throw a hammer at the cricket, killing him. To be fair, this was on accident. He just wanted to throw the hammer by the cricket. But like, all right, hear me out. This cricket is a century old. And now he's dead. Oh, here's the band <laughs> hammer, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> 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 We're just gonna ban you from the century live here. <sighs> you know, it's fine. Um, after doing that, Pinocchio just fixes himself a meal meal and falls asleep with his feet on the stove, resulting him it, it was in this it resulted hit and then the, the words I really can't work tonight. Uh RMB. I'm over it. I'm over the words. <laughs> but um, results in this, he his feet get burned off because he's made of wood. Um, that night after Geppetto was released from jail, 
Yeah, he agrees to make Pinocchio some new feet as long as he goes to school the next day. Being the really nice, amazing person Geppetto is, he sells his only jacket so he can buy Pinocchio a textbook so he could go to school the next day. Like, that's, in my opinion, that's, like, so sweet. Selling your only jacket so your kid can go to school. That's how dirt poor Geppetto is. And that's how much he cares for this puppet. But why is a puppet going to school? You know, I have questions. I want to know where this man's head was whenever he was writing this. What are your thoughts on it? I mean, if he's going to jail for allegedly abusing a child that he did not do anything to other than create, I would say he ought to send him to school, give him a good education. Maybe that would straighten him up a little so that way he you know, stops kicking him, doesn't get him thrown back in jail, hopefully. Uh, I can but I can kind of see why he would send him there. However, I am curious how a block of wood eats food. I didn't think about that. Does it really need to eat and sleep? I would no. assume not. But, you know, I'm... Photosympathous, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's how he eats. He's a well, I guess wood's not a plant. I don't know. Well, the base of a wood tree. Is, wood is a dead tree, so it doesn't even need photosynthesis. True, because it's alive. All right. <laughs> Moving on. But Pinocchio the next morning, uh, he takes a textbook with him and starts to go to school. Um. Mm, and he gets sidetracked by uh, this guy, uh, this puppet show that was going on. So he went up and saw that it was a puppet show and was like, I want to go. All right, cool. So you know what he does to get a ticket to go to the show? He sells his textbook that Geppetto just sold his jacket to get him and then buys a ticket to the puppet show. But the marionettes that were in the show actually were, I guess, made by the same block of wood as Pinocchio. So they instantly recognize him, ruining the whole show because they were calling out his name. And puppet master Manji, uh, I forget how to say this last name. Fuoku? Fuoku? Fuoku. That's Maybe. how you do it. Fuoku um, holds Pinocchio personally responsible. Um, Fuoku decides that he was going to use Pinocchio as firewood to cook for his meal later that night. So this puppet master is a really scary dude. Um, in the book, he was described as... A, I'm going to read quote by quote here. A large man so ugly, he evokes fear by simply being looked at. He has a beard as black as, uh, as a smudge of ink and uh, so long that uh, it fall, fell from his chin to the ground. He, enough so that when he walked, he'd step on it. His mouth was as wide as an oven. His eyes were two red-tinted lanterns with a lights turned on at the back. And his hands, and it, with his hands, he sported a large whip made with snakes and fox tails knotted together. Now let's talk about. Well, on on screen you see that's what the um, book has him looking like so it's pretty scary if you in my opinion um let's talk about how the book describes him like 
so large and so ugly that just by looking at him, he strikes fear. That dude must... Wh how is he a puppeteer for children? Well, that's why he has the magical puppets. They go out there and do the show, and he just hides somewhere so that way children don't see him. Then he gets all the money afterwards because he doesn't have to pay a cast. I guess, yeah. But I want to know what he uses the whip for. Does he whip the poor little marionettes? I need answers! <laughs> but, anyways, even though he looks very terrifying at heart, well, he is. But he's also very compassionate. When Pinocchio breaks down in sadness, telling the puppet master that about his poor father waiting for him at home, the puppet master had sympathy and gives Pinocchio five gold coins to give to his father and set him free. Now, being really scary and you think probably greedy, where does the sympathy come from? I wonder if he had a similar type of childhood. Why he's so greedy. Or might be greedy. I don't know. Doesn't Are you suggesting it. that he's actually he secretly a, a grown-up? Oh, I was going to say he was secretly a grown-up wooden block. Uh, maybe. You never know. <laughs> maybe he was carved out and over the years they just added more to him. And that's why he has such a long beard. Just hmm. wanted more added, but never wanted to cut it. You're making my brain explode. theories. <laughs> <laughs> right. But on the way home, Pinocchio come, uh, comes across a fox who's pretending to have a bum leg and a cat claiming to be deaf. How do you claim to be deaf? I mean, I understand, but whatever. No, it's fine. They tell Pinocchio that if he plants his five gold coins in a field outside of Catchfuls, um, that they'll sprout into gold trees. Uh, a bird tries to warn Pinocchio about uh, getting played for a fool, but the cat eats the bird. Wow. All right. Cool. Just eat that poor little birdie. Poor bird. But the <laughs> fox and the cat offer to walk him to the city. Um, and so Pinocchio goes with him. They con him into using one of his gold coins to pay for their expensive dinner in a nearby inn. Pinocchio fell asleep at the inn, and the cat and the fox left with leaving a note for that there was an emergency, and they'll meet him at the feared Field of Miracles the next morning. All right, that's rude. Hey, don't worry, there's an emergency. I'm going to leave, sneak out. Have you guys ever done that? I have. <laughs> Snuck out? <laughs> no, I called in the work saying there was an emergency when there wasn't. Uh, I'm I thought you meant uh, sneaking out. <laughs> no, but that was sneaking out of work. <laughs> but. Um, but whatever the, whatever Pinocchio wakes up, he sees this note. Um, ahead all along the path is the cat and the fox. They already have themselves as disguised as bandits and try to rob him of his last four coins, which is totally rude. So they're just going to take his coins whenever he walks by, like. Rude. You don't take things from children. But, you know, it's fine. Um, they almost got Pinocchio when he bites off the cat's hand and runs to a nearby house where the fairy with the turquoise hair lived. Uh, Pinocchio bangs on the door and the fairy tells him that all of the people in that house, including herself, are dead. And that she's waiting for the coffin. Why? Why? What? It doesn't make sense to me. I guess everybody's dead, and I'm waiting for my coffin. Like, okay, cool. 
But without her help, Pinocchio was caught uh, by the bandits, and they tied Pinocchio's hand behind his back, proceeding to hang him from a tree. This isn't the normal traditional hanging, um, like the kind that snaps your neck in, on instant impact. They they strung him up by his neck, lifting him off the ground. So he was forced to suffocate while the fox and the cat watched until they got bored. After they got bored, the cat and the fox walked away, leaving Pinocchio alone and to reflect on all his bad decisions he has made and the uh, tomfoolery that led to his death. All right, now let's stop and talk about how this, what happened. Like, look how immediately dark the story got. Like, in my head, that would send kids a message. If you're bad, you're going to die. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> that's, wow. What are your guys' opinions on that? In chat. <laughs> I don't know your guys' opinions on it. Um, well, let's see if anybody's... What's your, what's your opinion on it? Uh, uh, I honestly don't really see how it's supposed to be that you get a... Don't take the easy way out as the thing. Like, I guess it's relating back to... Pinocchio was going to plant the five gold to get more gold. But that's really all that I could find for them to say that. I don't actually see how you could say don't take the easy way out from that. Yeah. To me, it would be more like don't trust a talking fox and a talking cat. <laughs> <laughs> don't trust them. They're scoundrels. There's a reason why they say a sly fox. Right, right. Not a sly bird or a sly cat. But, well, um, what? Go ahead. Sorry. The cat was trying to be sly too, so I guess. He tried and failed because he lost his pants. <laughs> I also want to know like, were they just. Walking on two legs, or were they walking on all fours? In the book, like, yes, they are in the in the book. They are walking on um their hind legs. They're walking like people. I mean, that's kind of true, Jazaz. Yeah. Uh. Um. Well, but, but, uh, go ahead. in response to what Mr. Tofu just said, uh, I don't know that he necessarily was skipping school to try to get easy money, not as his original intent anyways. He didn't even try to get easy money. You're thinking of the movie. This is the book. In the book, it states that he sold his textbook to uh, buy a ticket so he could just go watch the puppet show. He wasn't intending on getting any money out of it. Yeah, but I'm assuming he's referring to uh, the easy money oh, as being the planting the gold coin. Oh, that. I forgot about that. Rip, <laughs> or, you know. Oh, well, you know, it's fine. <laughs> I don't remember what I just said like 30 seconds ago, so that's just how it goes. <laughs> This is true. He did take the easiest, the easy way out all the time and shattered his father's hard work. Yep, you're right, Zaz. Um, but let's continue. That isn't the actually the, that is the end of the original story before the, um, the story got the big feedback that it got. Um, everybody said that the ending was too depressing and the publisher requested that the story to be expanded, causing another 15 chapters. That's crazy, in my opinion. 
That's a little too much reading for me. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of reading to get this information, you guys. So you better love me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Pinocchio was saved by the fairy with the turquoise hair. So pretty much she sends a hawk. To say to cut him down the rope, and then she sends a stagecoach to uh, bring him back to the house. Just a second ago, though, not like not long before this, he was banging on her door asking her to help. But how she finds out that he is hanging from a tree is she looks out the window and just sees it. Like, okay, I'll help you now that I see you're kind of in trouble. I didn't realize <laughs> I, I I'm kind of dead right now. Like what? <laughs> I'm too dead to help until you're dying. I'm too dead to help until you're dying. Yeah, pretty much. But uh, whenever Pinocchio gets inside her house, the fairy calls three famous doctors to um, gauge what the puppet's condition was. The first two was an owl and a crow, and they couldn't give a definite answer. Um, but the cricket. Um, the ghost of the cricket that Pinocchio killed earlier in the story, the cricket said Pinocchio um, will be alright, but he is very irresponsible and a terrible son. That has to sting just a wee little bit. <laughs> um, the fairy tries to get Pinocchio to um, to take some medicine, but to, to so the recovery can speed all along just a little bit, but Pinocchio refuses until four rabbit undertakers come with a coffin to take his body away. Then that catches his attention, and he takes the medicine right away, feeling almost completely healed. Hmm. Now he has to explain to the fairy how he got in the situation he was in. Pinocchio was telling the fairy everything that happened up to the incident. When the fairy asks about the gold coins, Pinocchio started to lie. The fairy says there are two types of lies. One that makes your legs grow shorter and lies that make your nose grow longer. So we all know the story of Pinocchio that his nose grows. That's the type of lie he does. I never heard that saying before that whenever you lie, your legs grow shorter. But until I started thinking about it really hard, my grandma used to tell me that all the time. And she tells me that I lied so much as a kid, that's why I'm only five foot. <laughs> but you know, it's okay. <laughs> um, no, it's not. That's why she is laughing about it. She wishes that she had another two inches to keep it ever tight. <laughs> uh, if only. I'm literally an inch away from being literally a tidy person. <laughs> um, or I don't know what they actually want to be called now. Midgets. But it's okay. I know that's kind of rude, but sorry. I'm going to be quiet now. Anyway, <laughs> let's move on. It's not about me. <laughs> Um, at first, with Pinocchio's nose being really long, um, he was lying so much that he couldn't move his head in either direction without knocking things over. At first, the fairy thinks it's extremely funny, trying to teach him a lesson, but then Pinocchio gets really upset and starts to cry. After a few hours, the uh, fairy was tired of listening to this poor little puppet cry and summons 1,000 woodpeckers to peck away his nose until it's back to normal. The fairy seems to truly care about Pinocchio at this point, and she offers him, offers him and Geppetto to move in with her. And she will help raise uh, Pinocchio as her little brother. Geppetto was already on his way over when Pinocchio was... And Pinocchio was very, very excited to see him so he could apologize for being such a bad son. I mean, I probably would have done the same thing as the fairy. Uh, be honest. 
You'd summon a thousand woodpeckers? No, I'd listen to him cry for a couple hours. Oh, uh, I'd also just like to point <laughs> out, uh, how long would his nose have to be for a thousand woodpeckers to be needed? I mean, just yeah. imagine that. I'm terrified of birds. I don't want to imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean? No, that sounds scary. This I mean, I of... can think of one advantage, though, to that. Hmm. Just have, uh, whenever it's cold out, just have him start lying a bunch to you. His nose grows out, cut it off, throw it in the fireplace, and then you got a little bit of extra uh, firewood. Ow, and smart idea. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they've already managed to do it once, so if he was willing to do it. Right, right. Um... But Pinocchio decides to leave the house and start looking for his father along the way. Uh, so he could meet up with him and just see him sooner. But along the way, he runs into the cat and the fox again. The cat is still missing his paw. But the, that Pinocchio bit off in self-defense. But for some reason, the puppet didn't put two and two together. And it took a lot of convincing, but they, again, persuade him in going with a cat and fox to the field of miracles to get him to plant his coins. When they get there, they decide to um, split up after Pinocchio got done planting the coins. And then Pinocchio came ba back just a few minutes later and see he has been scammed. It took him this long to realize that he was being scammed. And he didn't notice the cat didn't have another paw. Hey, I mean, just like... I, mean, I, under I understand that they were dressed up as bandits, but you would think, oh, you had a paw a second ago. I bit something off over here. But now, you don't have a paw. Huh. But you also have to remember, I guess, that Pinocchio has the innocence of a child. They don't really put two and two together. I'm guessing he's about like, I'm assuming like seven years old is what I'm assuming because he's going to school and he's, I don't know. That's what age I'm gathering, but that's just my personal opinion. It never doesn't say in the book or anywhere how old he actually would be. I mean, we can gather at this point, he's probably only about a day old. He's only a day old. Yeah. So I'll give him a little leeway for that. I don't expect him to be able to handle it at a day old. True. But Pinocchio, after he realized he was scammed, he ran to the nearest courthouse in Ketchful, who that was populated by people who sacrificed their whole future for just immediate satisfaction. When Pinocchio gets to the courthouse, he explains everything to this gorilla judge. This judge has sympathy for him, but decides to punish Pinocchio for the crime of foolishness. I mean, can we have that in real life? The act of foolishness? You get summoned to 50 years in jail. But not really. Ban hammer. Ban, ban. Um, <laughs> you get jail time for one day. What did I do, officer? You were foolish. Right. Oh, okay. Anyways, um, after being in jail for four months, he was in jail for four months for being a fool. Um, Pinocchio starts to, his way back to the fairy's house, which he finds is no longer there. It has been replaced by a gravestone. Pinocchio started to cry, and a nearby pigeon overheard him and offers to take him to the beach where Geppetto was currently building a raft to go look for Pinocchio. Um, well, that's really nice that he is probably really sad. He had a lot of time to sit and think in jail. Probably, I would assume. Hopefully that made him behave more. We, you would hope he gives him a little bit of time to mature and 
I was about to say in style, but that's not really style. <laughs> <laughs> but when when Pinocchio arrives, he dashes to the coat to the coach. Why did I say coach? I meant coast. The coast, and he sees Geppetto far out in the water. Pinocchio tries to swim out to him, but the current kept pushing him back. Pinocchio then sees a giant wave that crashed down on Geppetto's raft. Pinocchio then tries once again to swim out to save Geppetto. But when he gets there, he sees that the old man's body is gone. Pinocchio swims to an, uh, to the nearby island of Busy, where everyone on the island spends their whole day working and doing chores. Um, it takes quite a lot of time for Pinocchio um, to figure out the process of hard work to earn something. But whenever he finally does figure it out, he offers to help a woman carry her water into her house in exchange for a drink. When he bit, whenever he finishes that, he actually recognizes the old lady, and it's the fairy with the turquoise hair. Just somehow got older in just four months. I mean, I've so, heard of aging bad, but... Jeez. <laughs> Um, just imagine like, watching your father get hit so hard by a wave, it just, he vanishes. Like, where'd you go? Hello? Father Geppetto? That'd be me, like, if I was Pinocchio. Father Geppetto, where'd you go? I mean, I'm a block of wood, I don't need to breathe, let me just... <laughs> True. Swim under... Like... That's something that doesn't make sense. Him, like, choking earlier. Yeah, Yet right? he's made of wood. He doesn't need air. And, like, you know, he's from a tree. So if he really needed to, he could produce his own air. I guess, yeah. But, um... She made a deal with Pinocchio um, that he could come live with her and she will act as his well, mother. You just not have to breathe and you don't have to worry about air. If he goes to school, she convinces him that if he's good for an entire year, that he will become a real boy. Like, I would totally, if I was a... Uh, Marionette, I would totally want to be. I would want to be a real boy or a real girl. Like, mm. Took you a minute to think of how to say that. Yeah, I could. I was trying to. I didn't want to say puppet because I've said puppet so much. And I was like, what's the other <laughs> word? <laughs> I don't like words. Puppet. But, anyways. <laughs> Um, Pinocchio works very hard, and he hits a few bumps along the way, like including a fist fight. But Pinocchio worked worked really hard to rise above everything. And then, when the fairy said, then the fairy says a whole year later, pretty much that um, she's gonna throw him a party. Um. Since he was being so awesome, Pinocchio went to invite all of his friends. You got to remember, way back when, you didn't have Facebook to just, here, hey guys, there's a party going on. So he actually went out and hand delivered all of his lovely, lovely invitations. When Pinocchio sees his friend Candlewick, that's when the trouble started creeping over the horizon. Candlewick tells Pinocchio that he, that he can't come because he is waiting on a ride to Toyland where nobody has to work and they can just have fun all day. Candlewick invites Pinocchio to go along with him. At first, Pinocchio said no because he worked so hard for this long 
but Candlewake was very convincing. And Pinocchio ends up joining Candlewake. Like, imagine you work so hard for a whole year so you could become a real boy. And then this scumbag of a friend comes along and doesn't support you and says, hey, you want to go to Toyland? No, not really. I would I think. To. Well, Candlewick may not realize he's not a real boy since he's walking, talking wood. Even though, you know, a lot of these things are also walking, talking animals. Right. Uh, but he may not think anything of it or understand why he wants to be. True, true. But despite of all the warning signs, such as donkeys wearing shoes, one donkey even told Pinocchio and Candlewick that it was a very, very bad idea to go to the um boy, the the island. Um <clears throat> Pinocchio and Candlewick didn't pay attention to any of the warning signs and stay at Toyland for five months. Living the dream. One morning, Pinocchio woke up and see that he grew a pair of donkey ears. Candlewick also grew a pair of donkey ears. By the end of the day, both of them had transformed enough to a full donkey. And Pinocchio was sold to a circus. After being abused and trained for three months, Pinocchio sprains his ankle and was sold again. This time, um, it was uh, he was sold to a man that planned on killing him for a hide, so he could just make a drum. Whoa! I've never heard of making a drum out of donkey hide. I didn't look this uh, fact up. I forgot all about it. I was curious back then what maybe when this whole story was set. I wonder. It doesn't really make sense, but that's okay. Nothing really makes sense in this freaking book. Um, but uh, looking into the donkey's eyes, he decided he couldn't kill him himself. So, what did he do? He tied both of the donkey's legs together and tied a rope around his neck and threw him into the ocean. Crazy. Like, I can't actually kill you with my own bare hands. But here, I'll let the ocean do it. You can die semi-naturally. Um, the fairy still looking out for Pinocchio. She sends 1,000 fish to uh, eat the donkey off of him. When the man fished, uh, fished out what he thought was going to be a donkey, he got an alive puppet. This man was very, very angry. That he spent his money on a pretend donkey. Pinocchio jumps back into the ocean before being turned into firewood. Pinocchio swims as far away from land as he could. Only to come across a terrible dogfish. So, let's talk about this man. And why... He didn't kill him the way he was going to kill him. I understand he looked into the donkey's eyes, but you would assume that he's already killed donkeys before. What do you think he saw in Pinocchio's eyes that was different? He may not have necessarily uh, seen anything different. Uh, it may just be that Maybe he didn't actually look into the donkey's eyes before. Maybe he had tried avoiding that. And uh, since he didn't avoid it that time, he had to find a different way. Good observation. Um, my opinion on it is go buy yourself a pair of drums and just kill the donkey. <laughs> Don't do it yourself. It's rude. But... Pinocchio, after he runs into the dog, uh, into this dogfish, 
He tries as fast as, as hard as he can to swim away. He was swimming as fast as he could, but the dogfish being a fish, he catches up to Pinocchio and eats him alive. Pinocchio decided, well, this is my fate now. I might as well just explore the belly of the beast. So he did. And he actually finds Geppetto, his father. And he finds out that Geppetto has been living there for two long years. He had been surviving off of a swallowed ship. All their supplies. Where are these other people from the ship? Or is Geppetto the only one alive still? Maybe they managed to get away. Maybe. But that's lucky for Geppetto that, you know, he had all those supplies from the ship. But you think, within two years, the belly of the beast would, like, dissolve it? Like, yeah. stomach acid? <laughs> is that a thing in fish? I don't know. I don't know anything about fish. I mean, in a world of... Them. Talking living wood. I know. I don't there can't that, be uh, any logic in anything, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs science at this point? Who needs science? There's talking cats and dogs. Well, no dogs. There's a dog Fox. fish. What the heck is a dog fish? Uh, a fish with You're... four legs that barks. <laughs> or would it be a? F- a f- or would it be a dog? With wet feet and a fish head that goes blub blub. It would also have to have a gill. You know, there's no logic here. It's all right. Anyways, well, they both pretty much decided just to climb out of the dogfish, his stomach, and ride back to land on a tuna. All right, that sounds like a fun ride. Please, Disney, create a ride called Riding on the Back of Tuna. And I want to ride it. Like, I'm ready. But anyways, along the way, they actually run in to the cat and the fox. And pretty much they try to be all buddy-buddy with Pinocchio, but Pinocchio turned them away. He's like, nah, fam. I'm over you. I don't need you in my life anymore. And then um, he just turned them away. And then after that, Geppetto and Pinocchio both find a little college, college, cottage that they are welcomed in and find that the ghost of the cricket that Pinocchio had killed in the beginning of the story. Um, the cricket is kind of still pretty bitter about Pinocchio killing him. I mean, I would be too. I, I see where the cricket's coming from. But he let the uh, he let Geppetto and Pinocchio both move into his house. Why does a cricket that is dead need a whole house to himself? I will never know. <laughs> Pinocchio then gets a job with a farmer. The farmer actually is the one who bought Candlewick as a donkey. Unfortunately, Pinocchio watches Candlewick die from being overworked and not given enough water. Imagine watching one of your friends pretty much die in front of you. Like, I couldn't. Nope. Can't do it. (laughs) Ban hammer the farmer. Nope. We're over it. (laughs) Um, But, well, Pinocchio works so hard every day for long periods of time just so he could get a glass of milk for Geppetto so he can help build his strength back up. Now, remember how Pinocchio kicked Geppetto at the beginning and look at him now taking care of him. Like, that's a big jump and a big difference, and I applaud Pinocchio for finally learning respect. And it has Um, been over two years, though. I know, it has been. You're right, and he's gone through a lot of things. Um, So, it should be, well, I guess I would expect him to uh, have had some form of growth. Yeah. Um, 
uh, Pinocchio decides to start making baskets and sell them so that he, he could buy him, uh, buy them some food, water, and some books so he can learn how to read and write. He also saves up enough money to buy himself a new suit. But when going into town to run a few errands and to buy himself the new suit, he runs into the snail he met at the island of Busy. The snail tells him that the fairy that has helped him is dying and can't afford food or any more for medication. Um, then Pinocchio, without missing a beat, hands him his 40 pennies. And then that night, he had a dream that the fairy came down and kisses his head. When Pinocchio wakes up, he, the next morning, he was he finds out that the fairy did, in fact, kiss him and turned him into a real boy. He also had, sitting next to him, had a new suit, some shoes, and the fairy also gave him 40 gold coins in exchange for the 40 pennies he used to help the fairy. At the end of the story, Geppetto and Pinocchio uh, looked at Pinocchio's puppet body and Pinocchio saying, and I quote, Oh, how ridiculous I was as a marionette, and how happy I am now that I am a real boy. That is one of the last lines in the whole book. Now, imagine this, looking at your body you were in for so long. I think that's a little creepy, in my opinion. But what about you, Bermide? Yeah. I think it would be a little weird looking over at your body from a different body. Like, it would be one thing to look over at your body just in any instance, because sometimes maybe some people dream where they're looking at their body. I mean, I but don't. <laughs> so like from the third person. Yeah, that's, right. and, that's uh, how I dream. Weird. So weird. I'm like, I'm a lot skinnier in my dreams than I am in real life. <laughs> Just an FYI. Just throwing it out there. But continue. Uh, but then to do it from another body entirely, like you can turn and look in a mirror and then look back at the body and see two different people there. Like, yeah. that's going to be a little weird for you. That would be really, really weird. Um, Chat, what is your opinion on the on the adventures of pinocchio the original story that inspired disney to create the movie pinocchio what are your opinions on it well this isn't necessarily an opinion but i do want to point out a comment by hey mr tofu yeah, sure. saying that it's a representation of how he looks at his old toxic self versus the good person he developed into i think that 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 is awesome it's the nail on the head really yeah you're in charge of chat. <laughs> <laughs> so if you see uh, any comments, let me know. All right. Uh, I do agree with Mr. Tofu. I I actually really like how you thought of that. Why didn't I think of that? Because I can't words. <laughs> <laughs> My <laughs> that's that's how I think. But if there aren't any more. Things like that, we can move on to me asking you guys some questions. Uh, Zazaboom mentioned it to put it into an easy way. It's a picture of rebirth. Just as a shorter way to put it, I guess. Yeah, I like that too. You guys are awesome. I love you. All right. Anyway, let's move on to a lovely Disney trivia if you guys are ready. Um... The first question, and here we go. How many Disney princes are there as of 2019? Okay, we got 20 seconds up there. Let's see if anybody can get it. <laughs> I was just about to say, we need some sort of uh, music to put up for this. Did Just something running in the chat? background. Uh, we have one guess. 
What's that? Seven guess? from Zazabu. Oh, uh, sorry, two. The second one is Tofu saying 22. As of 2019, there are 12 official Disney princesses. Because Anna and Elsa are not considered an official Disney princess. Throwing that out there. <laughs> Anyways, moving on to the second question. Um, what Disney movie uh, phrase means no worries? What is the phrase that means no worries? <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and throw that up there. You got 20 seconds to uh, try and figure that out. I know this is a hard one. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure Zazabu just got it as I'm looking at the chat here. He says, Akuna Matata. It means no worries. Oh, I don't know. Can we give that to him since he did say Hakuna Natata? Natata. Akuna Natata. <laughs> what a wonderful <laughs> phrase. Akuna Natata. Right? No? All right. Well, all right. Moving on to the <laughs> next question. Both Tofu and from Aladdin. Yes, TIE Fighter. It is from <laughs> Aladdin. You are so right. <laughs> no, it's from Lion King. Y'all need to get it right and not have false information <laughs> thrown at your head. Anyway, who voiced Maui in the movie Moana? All right, we're going to get that uh, 20 seconds up there for you again. And uh, I guess good luck. What can I say except you're welcome for the sun? <laughs> <laughs> for the... From the... <laughs> Something, the gra oh, the sun, the Scott. I don't even remember. That's horrible. <laughs> the Wayne Johnson, yet the Rock. That is right. <laughs> and one last question. You guys are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, all right. This is a true or false question. True or false. Mufasa was voiced by the same actor in the remake. As he did in the original. True or false? You got a 50-50 chance, so just go ahead and throw that out there. Either one that you think. <laughs> Whether it's right or not, don't even hesitate. <laughs> and if you're in the Discord Elevate, uh, me and Ty, we had a lovely, lovely discussion about this, if you were there for that. <laughs> I see everybody in chat is yelling true, and that is absolutely 100% correct. So, no. oh, go ahead. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and tally up the uh, points for everyone. I believe that that leaves I think there, there's a tie. Zazabu at three, and Mr. Tofu, just because he was a little slower, would be at one, because the true or false one was open for everybody. However, they would technically, yes, be at a tie. <laughs> Is tie in a tie? <laughs> <laughs> yes, a tie. <laughs> okay. Hi, Lilo. You come to say hello while I'm doing my lovely, lovely thing over here? Hi, Doc. Great. Anyways, so now we're going to move on to the movie story. But first, we're going to watch... Pinocchio's trailer. Well, so that was the cute little trailer of Pinocchio. My favorite character is Figaro the cat. He's so adorable. Also, did you see Snow White was there? If you haven't seen it, go watch your last Walt Wednesday. To point that out there, we did Snow White. Yes. <laughs> the very first, you know. Walt Wednesday episode. You know, yeah. Anyways, 
Now we're going to talk about the lovely movie, and then we will discuss the differences between the story and the movie. Well, if you don't mind, first I'd like to uh, give my thoughts on the trailer, actually. Oh, yeah. Hi, you're here. <laughs> <laughs> okay uh anyways i'm going to ignore that and just go straight to it uh i thought that the trailer was actually very well done it didn't give away the story which is something that as i pointed out last week i do not like and it actually gave us a little more to look at it showed us the main characters and you know that was something that I kind of disliked about the Snow White trailer that we saw. Uh, so I just think overall that this trailer was much better. And I enjoyed the little bit of humor that they still managed to put into it with uh, the conscience. <laughs> oh, the conscience? That's not what always gets me to smile. It's got no strings to hold me down. <laughs> <laughs> that always gets me. I can't. No matter how old I am, I think I will always laugh at it. Like, I just, I, I can't not. It's too cute and adorable and funny, in my opinion. Anyway, continue on what you were saying. Uh, that's actually pretty much all I've got as my review for the trailer. Uh, do you have anything you wanted to add to that? I mean, like, I, I agree with you, like, a lot. But <laughs> I... I kind of wish they didn't put Snow White in there because it's not like I don't I see what they did like oh this was the first like if you ever see it go watch it like hey but at the same time you want to focus on the movie you're trying to get people to see you don't want to focus on another movie if granted this is only the second um Walt Disney long, long featured animated movie thing however they say it you know words <laughs> but feature I don't like uh animated feature film yeah length length you need that word because this wasn't oh, the yes. first Sorry. this yeah it wasn't the first animated but it's their first linked animated film but i don't like how they put snow white in there i wish they would have just kept his pinocchio and maybe gave you just a little bit more but you know, that's okay. I, I believe. It's, it's um, 1940. Uh, that like that's when this movie came out in 19. I believe the reason that they threw in Snow White was it went over so well that they decided, hey, maybe if we remind them that Snow White was made by the same company or person, then uh, maybe we'll get more people to come and visit and look at this or watch it because if everybody loved snow white they see that and they're like oh snow white was great i'm going to assume that this movie will be great too so let's go check it out i agree with you but but anyways the movie pinocchio came out on february 9th 1940 we all Love need to love that date because that date is my birthday. Well, not the whole date, but February 9th, that's my birthday. Hey, yeah. So Pinocchio will always hold a little bitty place in my heart just because I think I was meant to be a marionette. <laughs> <laughs> and I got no strings to hold me down. Uh, actually, Jess is lying. She's actually 79. And uh, she was born in 1940. I don't age. I'm the blue. I'm the turquoise fairy. Oh, wait, she aged. Oops. I don't want to be her. She aged in four months. Nah, fam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, for uh, Revive, do you want to tell us about the movie? Yes. Uh... So the movie opens with an Italian woodcarver named Geppetto finishing up his marionette and naming him Pinocchio. That night, Geppetto wishes upon a star. It's the uh, opening song that we, well, that Jazz did. Attempted. <laughs> again, uh, attempted. I got, I got thrown off by Echo again. 
Don't worry, next week we'll get it correct. <laughs> but Geppetto wishes upon a star for his new marionette to become a real boy. Uh, which I'm assuming has something to do with the uh, if you wish upon a falling star or anybody who ever tried that maybe as a child or even now if you still try that. Uh, I, I am a child. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> but the blue fairy comes and grants his wish. Afterwards, she tells Pinocchio that if he proves himself brave truthful and unselfish, he will become a real human boy. Uh, she then assigns him Jiminy Cricket to be his conscience. Uh, a little bit different, I think, than the book already. Uh, just having the cricket as the conscience instead of a ghost. I mean, I think Zazabu will love that the cricket was a ghost, but you know it's fine. <laughs> uh, Geppetto was thrilled to see that his wish came true, though, and that Pinocchio came to life. The next day, Geppetto spins, or, uh, sends Pinocchio to school, and the only thing is that Pinocchio didn't make it to school. He got distracted by a fox and a cat, that convince him to join Stromboli's puppet show yep, sure. uh, for a very easy path to fame and fortune. Even though Pinocchio blows away the crowd, he gets uh, none of the profit that was made. When Pinocchio tried to leave, Stromboli snatched him up and threw him in a bird cage. Uh, <laughs> I don't like birds, and I would not want to be in a bird cage, but you know, that's all right. I mean, at least I don't think there was a bird in there with him, was there? No, there was not. Okay, I couldn't remember if I'm just forgetting it or... <coughs> I mean, at least there was no bird in there with him, so that would at least make it a little more peaceful, then at least you don't have that chirp, 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 chirp. That would drive me insane if I was in well, one. Like, what I don't understand is, in the movie, Jiminy Cricket is with Pinocchio, but you... He's a cricket. He can get out. He could probably pick up a keys and it's a cartoon and like open him up while well, like he's asleep. Like, yeah, I'll get you out. Don't worry. I'm your conscience. I got you, fam. Got you. But that doesn't happen, you know. <laughs> I need to be a Disney writer. New 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 goal. I'm done with streaming. Bye guys. So much. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. No, you gotta at least wait till the end of this episode. Oh, I, I know. <laughs> Just at the end of this episode, how about the season? Uh, I mean, that'd be preferred, but, <laughs> you know, if you're feeling really ambitious, you can try it. Uh, okay. Yeah, so I created this show out of ambition. You know, it's fine. <laughs> after he gets thrown in the birdcage, uh, the wagon takes off. And that night, the blue fairy comes down and tells him that he and Jiminy need to promise not to make any more mistakes. They promise, and the Blue Fairy sets them free. Uh, not too long after, he gets tricked all over again by a group of Misfits boys that trick him into going to Pleasure Island. The island is where young, stupid boys go to so they can act on every impulse and desire they have. No, I would not want to go to that island at all. I know in the movie, the things that they show is Pinocchio smoking um, and uh, being destructive of property. That's what I know that he did. That's what they showed in the movie. And I was just all like, why does a puppet need to smoke? Won't he like burn? <laughs> it's twice as deadly on his lungs. He has no uh, Whoa. Well, I mean, if uh, Geppetto, I almost called him just Gaspacho. If Gispacho. Geppetto, <laughs> hey, both start with a G. So, I mean, I was kind of close. Was uh, if Geppetto was being really thorough when making this, though, you know, maybe he actually would have gone through and maybe he had a surgeon's degree and actually carved in some organs and everything, too. 
Maybe, maybe. Uh, <laughs> after no more than a day of the unacceptable behavior, the boys start transforming into donkeys and are sold to the salt mines for slaves. Uh, or as slaves, I believe. Yeah, as slaves. Pinocchio and Jiminy escape the island and learn that Geppetto got eaten alive by a giant whale named Monstro. While searching for the missing puppet, uh, Pinocchio then takes on the responsibility of saving Geppetto himself. Despite the risks involved, he pulls it off successfully. Almost. Pinocchio actually dies in the process, but because of his bravery and selflessness to save his father, the Blue Fairy grants Pinocchio with his wish of becoming a real boy, and this strange little family lives heavily, ah, happily ever after. Uh, I want to point out that how Pinocchio saves Geppetto is by starting a fire in the whale's stomach, causing the whale to sneeze. Just a chew, and then there goes. There they go. Bye. We'll see you later, Mr. Whale. <laughs> right. But also, they jump off the island and dive into the water. When I believe a pleasure island, they run really fast. I sadly didn't get to brush up on the movie before this lovely, lovely Well Wednesday, but. That's what I remember. <laughs> I would remember more if I didn't, if I would have watched it. <laughs> you know, it's fine. Exciting. Gosh, Jazz. Uh, I know, Bermai, but I'm all horrible. But that was the movie. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but... Now, let's talk about the differences. There are so many differences. One, the movie summary is ten times shorter than the book summary. <laughs> let me mind you, let me just state that. Well, I believe if you read the script of the movie compared to the script of the book, that would be why. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> but the difference is, like, what I like is... I mean, they, of course, honed it down a lot for the movie compared to the book. Like, I think the book is, it has a good message, but I don't like how gruesome the book is. I don't think it should be a children's book. I'm a teacher, and I think it's too much for children. Especially at that, like, young of age, there's too much going on. Or at any young age, like I think there's too much going on. Granted, back in what was it, 1883, I believe. Let me go back and see, so I can quote myself. Yep, <laughs> 1883. Um, was uh, children probably were used to that type of thing, but I'm not entirely sure. There wasn't nearly as much censorship back then. Oh, I know. <laughs> But, um, like, with the um, kids turning into donkeys, I like how they did it faster in the movie than it did in the um, book. I understand why it took longer in the book. So they're like, let's just fulfill your dreams, and then we're going to crush it. Like, um, yeah. But, so, uh... I don't like I think, how... Hmm? Go ahead. Uh, I think the lesson I'm taking out of this is uh, don't misbehave or you'll get turned into a donkey and treat donkeys kind because they're probably a little boy that just, you know, <laughs> went to the wrong <laughs> island. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I mean, I could be very wrong, but uh, that's the lesson I'm taking away from this. Be kind to animals and each other. Don't misbehave too much, or you're going to suffer very bad repercussions. You should just always be kind to everybody, no matter what. 
Um, I also did learn a fun fact about Pinocchio. Um, I don't know if it's ex- exactly true. I can't say fun fact if it's not entirely true. But every, uh, where I've read was that um, Pinocchio is the second like most selling book next to the Bible, The Adventures of Pinocchio. That's what I heard. Don't quote me. That's what I heard or read and stuff. But I think if I'm correct, I just had to state it just in case I was correct in my inf- with my information. But let's move on to the casting of Pinocchio. I didn't really find much information about the um, actors and actresses. Granted, since being sick over the weekend, it was hard for me to do any research. So I, yeah, it was hard for me to do research. Um, Cliff Edwards voiced Jiminy Cricket. Dickie Jones voiced Pinocchio. Flash, Flash Alexander, because at the end of the movie, that is what Pinocchio's name ended up being. Um, Charles, uh, I don't know how to say his last name, so I'm going to butcher it. Doodles, like, but he voiced, um, Tromboli. Christian Rubb voiced Geppetto. And Evelyn, uh, Vanable voiced the Blue Fairy. (coughs) <laughs> um, I'd just like to uh, throw out there real quick. Uh, you have been quoted. I have been? Yes. If you uh, take a look yeah. in chat, Zazabu yeah. has quoted you. Don't quote me, Jazzy. <sighs> <laughs> uh, all right, but that's fine. Uh, Brett, do you, or Brimad, Br- 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 do you want to move on to the lovely, lovely. Um, upcoming events. Uh, all right. So, December 4th through the 15th, the Lion King Broadway show will be playing in North Charleston, South Carolina. I am very upset because I looked up how far away from that is me, and it's about six hours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go. Like, I had a chance to go see it once, and I never did because it was very expensive. But, Today is December 4th. Who wants to donate? <laughs> okay, I can go see it. Take time off work. Just like it. Or take time off work. So I can go see it. No? Nobody? All right. That's fine. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Totally joking. Don't don't say, don't give me your money. Don't, don't do it. <laughs> I don't want it. You worked hard for that moolah. Either that or you were a puppet that had those strings to hold you down and tried to get money in a Top of show, but you know it's fine. Uh, no judgment here, no judgment. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I have on... any kind of job, <laughs> right? Jess but... doesn't judge based on your job. That's her point of this whole podcast. Yes, it wasn't actually to inform you of Pinocchio. It was just to make that one statement. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, on Saturday, December fourteenth. Uh, so at some select Disney store locations, they are doing a Disney Junior holiday fun where you can be festive with your favorite Disney Junior pals. So probably like Mickey, Minnie, Goofy, Donald, Daisy, and of course we can't forget Pluto. So, but the only sad part about the whole thing, there are no character appearances. So nobody's going to dress up in any suits. I mean, um, nobody is going to. The Minnie and Mickey aren't going to be there. <laughs> Don't ruin it for the kids. But I'm planning on going. I know there. if you are near Knoxville, there is. it is going on in the Knoxville Disney Store at the uh, West Hills Mall. I do know that for a fact because I looked it up because I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, you know, 
time. But, all right. There is an upcoming movie, Star Wars, Rise of the Skywalker. Wow, actually. I'm not a fan of Star Wars. I know that's going to hurt a lot of you people out there, but I'm not. But that looks really entertaining. That looks really good, and I actually might go see it. I won't really understand much of anything, but you know, it's, it's, it's fine. It looks, it looks entertaining. I mean, you know somebody who could easily send no. you the other movies. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I already have them because I my fiance is already <laughs> Star Wars nerd. <laughs> but uh, yeah. But okay. as far as the I... trailer, I agree with Zelda Boy. Uh first time I saw that, I got chills from it. Um like I wanted to start crying whenever He said, I'm just looking one last look at my friends. And I'm like, oh, my heart. I don't know what your name is, but oh, my heart. And a little R2-D2 is next to you. Uh, Ty, why don't you go ahead and mute yourself again? Uh, or mute us again? That way you aren't surprised. But uh, that was C-3PO. I figured I, couldn't, I didn't want to be wrong. <laughs> but... All right. Um, I, I love the visual visual graphics of the of it. I love how it's a lot better than years of the older Star Wars. Um, I, well, I mean, they've it. also had years to yeah, I know, improve I know, that I know technology. This, I know this, but the reason I say snooze is because I can't get through the first one. I can't I really? I've tried multiple times. I just fall asleep. Which first one? <laughs> The first okay, first one, or where it's supposed to start from? Where are their babies being taken? Right? I don't know. Somewhere. I don't know nothing. But any of Star Wars. Okay, thing. let me put it this way. Is it the ones with Darth Vader or the ones without Darth Vader? I don't know. I never made it that far. Right. <laughs> I'm just gonna uh, stop with stop trying with that. Uh, <laughs> I so. can't get through the first five minutes, uh, but that's okay. But I really do think that um, the trailer was really good, and I really probably think I could stay away from this one. Um, the new video game that came out that was Star Wars. I really actually enjoy gameplay of it and watching. I have a fun playing it because me. You know, I don't want to be uh, forced to play with it, you know. Play, play it. Forced yeah. to play with it? Yeah, force. Use the force. Me trying to make funds doesn't work. I need to stop. I'm sorry. Um. Anyways, do you guys have any questions for either Bermib or me? And don't yell at me because I said something about Star Wars. That is not allowed in my chat. Sorry. <clears throat> kidding. Kidding. Yell at me all you want. But are there any questions about specifically Pinocchio? There you go. I was going to say you need to be specific. <laughs> uh, do you we've... guys have any comments about Pinocchio? I think that we uh, lost their... Uh, Pinocchio thoughts because yeah. now they're all ready for that Star Wars movie which I can't blame them yeah as TIE Fighter just said they're still very much on Star Wars uh, again I don't blame them I am a Star Wars buff as well I'm just over here all like Pinocchio I literally just read this like 
42 chaptered book. So please ask me questions. Please. <laughs> also, they're quoting you again. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> 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 Oh my god, and you're adding the quotes and stuff. <laughs> uh. <laughs> you guys, you guys. We're going to be all confused in like six months about where that came from. <laughs> and that's when we'll refer them back to the Pinocchio video, where they can then be schooled about Pinocchio. And, and then learn about Star Wars and how Jazzy knows nothing. <laughs> Not to quote me. Don't quote me. <laughs> okay, then. Uh, <laughs> for those at home who were terrified by that, I do apologize. <laughs> Jazz has gone rogue. <laughs> <laughs> uh. uh. You know what, Ty? I don't. I, I actually agree. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, Ty says Pinocchio's nose is less uh, than a lightsaber. I mean, sure, a lightsaber could cut through it. But if you get that nose long enough, you could just smack the person before they can even get anywhere near you with the lightsaber. But seriously, guys, do we have any questions about Pinocchio or any comments about the book of Pinocchio or any of the movie? Let's get back into the like actual reason why we're here. Please. And thank you. Okay. <laughs> I know. I don't care anymore. <laughs> you can't show Star Wars in anything, otherwise that's going to upset literally anything you have to say. Oh, hush, Ty. Yes, I just used my teacher voice on you. <laughs> you uh, Mr. That? Tofu likes the original story. I really enjoyed the original story. It was a very long, brutal read, but it was... <laughs> As opposed to a short movie watch. <laughs> but, um, yeah, uh, the book was really good. And I, if any of you really want to read it, I would highly recommend it. Um, it was long and brutal, but I also am dyslexic. So it took me probably twice as long as it would take you to read. Um, but I loved how the um, meaning behind the whole book. I also still think it's very gruesome for children. Um, I think we should put it in high schools instead of reading the uh, Salem Witch Trials. We should read Pinocchio. My opinion. That's an interesting thought. <laughs> uh, but well, I, I, mean, I don't like, think it would have any effect, to be honest. At least if no, you go I back to the high school we went to. Uh, spoiler, uh, me and Jazz went to the same high school. Okay. And uh, <laughs> I believe that if there are very many high schoolers, like some of the people we went to school with, they, it's like just pouring water into the ocean. It's not going to do anything. Well, yeah, but if you go and think about the Salem Witch Trials is meaning, and you look at the uh, Pinocchio's meaning, which one has a greater meaning? I think Pinocchio does, and I think it would impact some of the kids who I think it would probably make them think about more of their life choices just a little bit more. Granted, me in high school, I was a horrible. I, I, I was the teacher's favorite pet. I was the teacher's pets, so I always got to do whatever. But the administration hated me. So we had install suspension, right? By the end of my senior year, I had four more years of high school racked up just for school suspension that I never went to. That's, yeah. But, you know, it's fine. Um, 
But I think if I would have probably read The Adventures of Pinocchio, I think I would have actually probably straightened up a lot sooner than I actually Because if you actually go and actually read, I toned down the book a lot in my summary than reading the actual story. Um, it was very, it was a lot more gruesome. So if you ever get a chance to read it, please read it. Is there anybody? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Now, TIE Fighter, uh, the Salem Witch Trials did have people die, though. Huh? It's just a matter of whether or not you find it important. Uh, he mean... said that Mr. Tofu's nose was growing after he made that comment. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Back in high school, I think that Romeo and Juliet kept my attention a lot better than Pinocchio would have. I... Especially when we got to the movies. Wow. Wow. Are oh, you such a boy? <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> you're just such a boy. You know what I did during... Um, my... Uh, during that? Mm-hmm. I didn't go. I wasn't at school <laughs> yet. That was my first period. I never went to first period. Ever. Kids don't be like jazz. I am a bad example. But I am a teacher now, so I don't... We straightened up. Mm. <laughs> Some days I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> no, I kid. I kid. Yeah. But anyways, is there any more questions, comments, or anything about Pinocchio? Your shout out command is on cooldown. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Why now? But our socials on cooldown. No, they were not. Nobody? All right. But if you haven't already joined the Elevate um, Discord, please do that now because we are an awesome interactive community that will elevate you to new heights you didn't know you could reach. But before um, you leave to do that, don't forget to hit that follow button and make sure the notification bell is lit up so that way you know the next time that we go live. Which will, I don't know if there's any more shows for this week other than Streamer Spotlight. Um, every Sunday. At, every, yeah, every Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But next week we will be doing 101 Dalmatians for Walt Wednesday. So if you like this one, please come back. We'd love to see your pretty little faces. And also, Hug your little brother and sister. <laughs> Show them the love. Be like the blue fairy. And take a puppet under your wing. <laughs> I don't Provide know, it with kidding. 40 gold coins if it gives yeah. you 40 pennies. Yeah. If a puppet gives you pennies, you better just take the pennies and do whatever it says. Right. Because, you know. It's talking puppets. Yeah, that'd be a, a little scary, to be honest. Anyways, we will see you guys next week on Wall Wednesday. Bye-bye.